All right. Well, now we're going to implement this formula for Taylor series on a spreadsheet. And I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to fire up my spreadsheet here. And this is for Taylor series. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end remainder. So let be, it's important, as I said, to get some idea of the error. So we're going to give both the series and the error. All right. So uh, let me, for convenience, I'm going to go back here to my formula. And I'm going to grab it so that we can have it handy. Because we're going to need this. And I'll put that here. Let's make it a little smaller. Kind of, it's kind of crunched up, but uh, let's do it like that. I'll put it over here. All right. All right. So what we're we going to need here, if you see this formula, we have uh, point of expansion x, so we're going to need that. So. What else are we going to need? We're going to need, well, you can see here we have a certain number of derivatives. So I'm going to specify the number of derivatives. That's going to be my n. OK. Now notice here, for the remainder, I need the n plus first derivative of the function in this particular interval. Now, that's going to be hard to have Excel do that automatically. We're going to have to compute that by hand. So I'm going to say max uh, 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 absolute value of, of uh, n plus 1 derivative. Okay. And that's what we're going to have to put in here to tell what the error is. Now, we also have h. We're going to want to get this function in an interval, so I want to specify an interval of values of h. So I'm going to have a starting value and an increment, because I'll start say at uh, I'll start say at x at uh, h equals uh, minus three, and then I'll go up by 0.1 each time. That's something I could do. So let's try that. So, so I'll do starting value. And I'll also want the increment of h. Okay. So these are all the things that I'm going to need. This is kind of crunched up here, so I'm going to move this over like that. Uh, and I'm going to move this too because I want to put my values here. So let me start out. I'm going to do the function uh, cosine around the point uh, uh, x equals 0. So let's start out with a point of expansion x equals 0. And I'm going to go ahead and do 10 derivatives. So we're going to take this series up to 10 terms. This may seem like a lot of typing, but remember in Excel you can do the fill right, fill down, etc. So it's not that much typing. All right, now the nice thing about the function cosine is that my maximum well, let me, before this, just to be clear, I'm going to put a line here also for the function that I'm going to be expanding. So let me click here on the second row. Right click, insert rows above, and say, let's put function. And my function is going to be cosine of x. Okay. That's for my benefit. The spreadsheet won't be able to compute with that. Let me put that in a different format just to show what's going on. I'll put it in a different font color. And then these are all of the parameters that I'll need to compute this. So as I was saying, all derivatives of cosine are either cosine, sine, cosine, sine, minus cosine, minus sine, etc., etc. Uh, actually, the derivative of cosine is uh, minus sine. The derivative of minus sine is minus cosine. Well, we'll get there in a minute. But anyway, 
Uh, it's either cosine or sine, and cosine or sine have absolute value always less than 1. So here, the maximum absolute value of the nth plus first derivative, it's always going to be less than or equal to 1. I'll just put a 1 here. And as I mentioned, I'm going to take my values of h from minus 3 to 3. So I'm going to start with minus 3, and I'll take an increment of 0.1. So these are all the parameters that I'm going to need. So I'm going to highlight that to illustrate that that's a list of parameters. All right. So now what are we going to need? We're going to need the derivatives of this function because I have 10 here, we're going to need 10 derivatives of this function evaluated at the point x. Okay, So I'm going to give one line for the order. This order goes from, uh, from 0, this is actually the 0th derivative, up to the nth derivative. So I'm going to say order. Uh, of and I'll talk and I'll I'll call that I'll call that m, I'll call the order m. And I'm going to want the nth derivative uh, of f, f at x. Okay, I'm going to need that information for my Taylor series because I want to get all of these terms over here. I want to get all of these terms. All right. So as I mentioned. I'm starting with the zeroth derivative of the function, so I'm going to put order 0 here, and then order 1, and then uh, order 2, etc. Now, whoops, that was supposed to be a 2. All right. Now, one way to get all the numbers from 0 to 10 is I can hold down the shift, move right here. Let's keep going right here. If I, if I click on this little square here, notice that the cursor has changed to a plus. I click on this square and I just pull it right. It will continue that pattern for me. And I want to go up to 10. There we go. And then these columns are too fat. I'm going to have to make them smaller so that you can see. So I click on the B, hold down the shift, use the right arrow. And let me change the column width. I can go up to here, format, column, width. All right now it's 0.8. Let me take it down to 0.35. Right. So now these columns are much more visible for me. Still can't fit them all, but that's okay. Okay. Now uh, I need the nth derivative of f at x, and for that I actually need the the func the value of the function. Uh, you might think that's cheating because we're supposed to be using Taylor series to compute the function, and I'm going to put in the function here. However, notice that I'm only computing the function at one point, and the Taylor series is going to give me cosine at, at all points in an entire interval. So I could compute cosine at one point by hand, and then the Taylor series will give me cosine at other points in the interval automatically. All right, so let's start with this function cosine. Uh, the, the cosine, the zeroth derivative of co cosine is cosine itself, so I'm going to put equals cosine of my point zero here. So that's the zeroth derivative of cosine. All right, now here I'm going to need the first derivative of cosine. That's going to be equal to, actually, I want to do something here. Uh, instead of b3, let me click here, instead of b3, I'm going to fix this reference. Now you could fix the reference by typing dollar signs in front of b and the, and, the, and the 3. That would fix the reference. Another way to do it is to hold down shift and then press the F4 key. And that fixes the reference. Now if you're using Microsoft Excel, it's just F4. In LibreOffice, it's Shift F4. Okay. And you'll see why I did that in a minute. Right. Here I'm going to do the first derivative. Now the first derivative of cosine is minus sine. And I want to take minus sine at the point of expansion. Again, I want to shift my re to fix my reference. Shift F4. Okay. And we get 0. Here I'm going to take the 
uh, second derivative. Now, if you re remember, the second derivative of, co of cosine is minus cosine, which is just the negative of the entry here. All right, so I'm going to do that. And then here I'm going to take the uh, third derivative, which is minus sine, which is just negative of the entry here. All right. Now, uh, I still have several derivatives to go, but if you remember, the derivative of cosine cycles. The next value here is equal to the first value here. All right. So I, I did fixed references. It turns out that I don't need to. Uh, all I have to do is say the value here is going to be equal to the value here. Okay. And that rule is going to carry on for all of the remaining values here. So I can just select, hold down the shift, and press the right arrow key. Edit, fill, right. right. And now I have all of my derivatives of cosine. Okay, so where do I go from here? I want to create all of the terms in this series. So notice that I'm going to need the derivative times, well, let's look at this one, the derivative times h to a certain power divided by that power factorial. All right, so that's what, so in order to uh, I've, or, I've already got the derivatives. I've got f, f prime, and so on. I need this other part, which looks like h to the n over n factorial. Now, I'm letting my index be m, so what I'm going to call it is I want to find h, h to the, to the nth power divided by m factorial. And that's what I'm going to compute in this line here. Now, as I indicated we want to use different values of h. So I'm going to make a table here. And here I have orders here. I'm going to need h to the 0, h to the 1, uh, all the way up to h to the m. I've arranged this table so that I can put the powers of h underneath the m and line it up with the derivative that I'm going to be using in the same term. All right, so here I'm going to put h to the 0 over 0 factorial, h to the 1 over 1 factorial, h to the 2 over 2 factorial, etc. Right. Now all of these columns, h to the 0, h to the 1, h to the 2, and so on, they're all going to depend on h. Now h is the same as h to the 1, so I'm going to put h in this column here. So let me go ahead and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert another row here. So right click insert rows above. Okay, I don't want yellow here so I'm going to change the formatting here. I'm going to click here, format, cells, and I do not want background so I'm going to say no fill. Okay, and that gets rid of that. So here, uh, in this column is a special column. This is the column where I'm going to put H. All right, so let me go ahead and do that. My starting value of h is given by this value here. And every time I go to a new value of h, I want to increment by this value here. So I'm going to take here equals the previous value, which is minus 0.3, plus the increment. Now I always want to add the same increment, so when I fill down, I don't want the increment to shift as well, so I'm going to hit Shift F4 to make that a fixed reference. Right. Now this formula is the one I want to fill down. I can fill down by dragging this box here. And let's go ahead and do that. Let's see. All right, so I'm not quite far enough yet. Let's keep on going. Don't worry about this sharp, sharp, sharp here. 
uh, if I make this larger, you'll see that it's just a number in scientific notation, 2 times 10 to the minus 15th, a very small number. That's because there's numerical error. The number here actually should be 0. All right, so let me hit Control Z, keep the sharp, sharp, sharp there. Let me continue to fill down. Okay, I'm going to get all. I want to get all the way to three. So let's keep going. Almost there. Voila. Okay. So there's my H. Now I want to fill in the rest of this table. Remember to compute these terms. I'm going to need H to the M over M factorial. All right, so here I'm going to take equals. My value of h is here. I raise that to the mth power, which is here. And then I'm going to divide by uh, the factorial of this value. So, and you can see I typed in f. It already knows that it's factorial. So f, I'll just do that. And that's going to be this number also. All right. Now I'm going to put this same formula in every column here, but notice that the power that I raise to, that is the value of m in this formula, is always going to be the first entry in the column. That is, this b9, I'm always going to want to take from row 9. And this b9 here, I'm always going to want to take from row 9. So I'm going to fix this reference, and I'm going to fix this reference here also. If I do that and I fill down, I'm holding down the shift, pressing the down arrow. Let me go ahead and fill down. And I'll hit Control D for fill down. And we can look at one of these formulas to verify. Yes, it's taking this value of h here, multiplying it, uh, raising it to this, this power here, and then dividing by the factorial of the same power. Notice how I didn't worry about parentheses here. The order of operations states that the exponent will be taken first, and then the division. So I don't have to worry about the fact that this divide uh, could be interpreted as the divide of the exponent. That's not how it works. The computer will always take exponents first and then divide. Okay, So let me go ahead and do the same thing for m equals 2, 3, 4, etc. Now I've arranged this formula in such a way that I should just be able to copy it and paste it here. And let's see if that works. Okay. All right. I made. It. All right. So there was an error here. This is now taking the cell here and then raising it to a power. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Here I'm always going to want the value in column C. So I'm going to change that to a C, and I'm actually going to fix that C because I always want to be taking from column C. All right. That looks a little bit better. Let's take a look at this formula. This says this value to the power 2 divided by 2, so it looks good. All right, And I'm going to fill this right. Okay. Uh, let's see what we've got here. So let's make sure this is correct. It's taking this value to this power divided by the factorial. And so we're fine there. Okay, so let me go ahead and fill down. Edit, fill down. Ah, and again, don't worry about the sharp sharps though. Okay, so I'm going to color this table in because this is another uh, special table. This is where I do my calculations. And I don't have any more long calculations after this. Let me go ahead and make that blue. Okay. All right, now we're ready to get the Taylor series.
and I will put the Taylor series in this column. Let me move my stuff over so you can see what's going on. All right. Now, let's look at the formula up here. What I want to do here is take the function derivatives, and each function derivative will be multiplied by a term like this, h to the power over power factorial. And the corresponding derivative will multiply the corresponding power. If you notice, that's exactly how I have it set up here. What I'm going to want to do is take this row here. Every term in this row will multiply the corresponding term in the row down here. All right, so that's f to f, the zero derivative of f times uh, h to the zero plus the first derivative of f times f times h to the one plus the second derivative of f times h squared. How do I implement that? Well. Uh, I'm going to want to start here and uh, that's going to be equals. What I want to take is, uh, as I said, I want to take the, the sum of products of these two rows. So what that's called is sum product. All right. And I want to take the product sum of product of this row with the row below it. Okay. And I get this value here. Right. Now, uh, when I fill down now, I need to be careful. When I go down to the next row, well, let's see what happens. I'll just fill down and we'll see what happens. Right, what did it do? It took the wrong two rows now. I always want to be taking this derivative row times the corresponding h row. So let's go back and fix my reference. I'm going to hit escape to remove that. This here, uh, since I'm always going to be taking the derivatives, I want to leave this row uh, fixed. I want to leave, leave row 10 fixed. So this reference here should be a fixed reference. I'm going to hit Shift F4 to fix that reference. Now let's see what happens when I fill down. All right, that looks better. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this all the way down to the bottom. All right. And we have a Taylor series. Uh, okay. Let me, in order to make this clear, I'm going to make, because these are, these are headings here, I'm going to make this be a different color. I'll make that be a darker blue, because those are the column headings for this table. And I'm going to move this Taylor series down. I'm going to hit Control X, Control V here. And let me make that in uh, italics and bold, because that's very important. Okay. All right, so that's my Taylor series. I could go ahead and plot that. Let me do that in a minute. Let me also enlarge this to make it fit. I want to compare this Taylor series with my actual function. Let's go up to this formula. And the actual function is evaluated at x plus h. So I'm going to need a column where I give x plus h. That's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to type x plus h. And let me put that also in bold because it's a column heading. Now I have my value of h from this column and my value of x is given here. All right, so I'm going to say equals. Uh, let's click on the x. Now, x is always going to be the same, so I'm going to fix that reference. And then I want to add h. Now, my h is right here in this column here. And I can see I've started out correctly. 
and let's give the actual function. Remember, this is supposed to be the expansion of cosine. So we'll click that for bold. Here's the actual function. And this should be equal to the cosine of this value x plus h. All right, so here's my Taylor series approximation. Here's my actual function. Looks pretty close. Not too bad. We'll see how it works for the rest of the values. All right, here, as I said, it's important to compute the error. So here I'm going to compute the error. And the error is just the difference between these two. And I'm concerned about the magnitude of the error, so I'm just going to take the absolute value. And then I have a theoretical expression for the error that was given up here in this expression for r. So I'm going to have theoretical error here. Okay, and I'm going to make that bold also. All right, now what's the theoretical expression? Let me actually drag this over so I can see what I'm doing. The theoretical expression is going to be h to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times the n plus first derivative at c. So here I'm going to want equals. Let's go to my h here. h was here. I have to raise that to the power of n plus 1. My number of derivatives was, was here, so I'm going to have to add 1. And then I divide by the factorial of this same value. And then I want to multiply this result by my n plus first derivative maximum value, which was here. Right. Now I need to be careful about what uh, references I want to fix. Since I'm always going to be using the same number of derivatives and same at maximum absolute value, I want to fix this with a shift F4. And I want to fix this B4 also with a shift F4 and this B4 with a shift F4. The C11 is not fixed because C11 refers to my value of h. Okay, so I think I'm pretty much set here. Let me zoom out so we can make sure that we're okay. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. All right, but it looks like I'm okay. I'm going to press enter and I'll let you look at that formula again if you need to. You can pause the video if you need to, to copy the formula. All right, so now I'm ready to fill down all my values here. I'm going to fill down to the bottom. Control D gives me the fill. And let me fill this out a little bit. And let's see how we did. Okay. All right, I'm going to want to plot the Taylor series. so. Uh, uh, I want, actually want to plot that. Uh, let, let's plot the actual function first. So I'm going to select these two columns all the way down. Okay. And I want to insert. Okay, let's go back here. Uh, actually, here, this is the chart icon. I want to go insert a chart. The chart type I want is called XY because I selected the X values and the Y values. So I'm going to do XY and let's go ahead with, with lines only. And uh, let's see what else. Um, we've already got this. Uh, data range, that's fine. Data series, that's fine. Chart elements, let's do a title. So this is um, Taylor series. 
And this is going to be my value of x, and then this is going to be my value of a function. Okay. okay, let's finish. All right. Now this is pretty big. Let's see if I can make it smaller. And let me, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this. I'm going to move it up where I, this may take a little while. Okay, sorry. Move it up. There should be a, there must be a faster way to move it. I'm trying to select it and uh, cut it and copy it. All right, here's what you can do. If I click in a cell, then I go back here, then go to Edit, Cut, and then move back up here where I want to put the graph. I want to put it somewhere here. I'll go here, and I'll do Edit, Paste, and that will move the graph to where I want it to be. Okay. Uh, let's see how we're doing here. So that's the actual function. Uh, it doesn't look too... Um, I'm going to have to make it bigger. The title is too big. All right, now what I want to do is I want to add the Taylor approximation. So I'm going to click in the graph, right-click. I think I have to, I think I have to double-click in the graph. Double-click in the graph, right-click, and data ranges, data series. I want to add another series. I want to add the name of the series. The name of the series is going to be All right now I'm ready to show my results in a graph. I'm going to want to plot the actual function and the Taylor series. Let me start with the actual function. These are my x values where I'm evaluating the function. So let me go ahead and grab these two. I'm using shift and right arrow. I'm going to go ahead and grab this area here. And the chart icon is up here, this red dot. So click on this red dot, and it gives me several options. For a chart type, I want XY. The reason is that in my first column, I have the X coordinates, and in the second column, I have the Y coordinates. And I want to do a line, so let me do just the line. Okay. So let's go to next. All right, I've already set my ser my range and my series. Uh, I'll put this stuff on later. So let's go ahead and finish. So you can see my function looks like a nice cosine curve. And it's even created a legend for me. That's the actual function. Actually, to show clearly the error, I'm going to make this a dotted line. The way you can make this a dotted line is if I click on the line here and right click to format data series, I can change the style of the line to a fine dotted line. All right, so that's my actual series. Now I want to add the data from the Taylor series, I can right click on this chart. I think I, let's see, if I right click there, uh, I, yes, that's fine. I go to data ranges. So that's where I can add more data to the chart. And I want to add another data series. This time, the one that has the Taylor series. So as range for name, I'm going to click here, and once I do that, I can move my slider, and as I said, this time I want the Taylor series, so 
so I'm going to click here. That's the name for my data series. For x values, similarly I want to select those. That's the values in this column here. So I'll just go ahead and start with this value, and these are all of my x values. Oops, it's covering them up. Um, I'm just gonna. We'll just have. We'll just have to guess here. I think this should be. I think this should be far enough. Okay. Um, Actually, it looks like I only need to go up to 71. So I'm going to go here and change that to 71. Okay. And then for my Y values, I'm going to select here. And my Y values are the Taylor series values here. So I'm going to select these. And I should only have to go up to 71. So those are my Y values. And let me click OK. Look at what I have here. I have my actual function in blue dots and my Taylor, my Taylor approximation very, very close. All right, so uh, I want to move this graph up top so it's where it's convenient. So I'm going to click in the spreadsheet to get out of the chart. Once I've done that, you see the border has changed on the chart. Now I'm going to click again in the chart, and you can see these green squares, which means it's now the chart is now a movable object. I'm going to right-click on the chart and cut it. Then I'm going to go up to the uh, top, and I'm going to paste I guess I'll paste it right here. So now my chart's up here. And let me make it, see the size here. I'm going to move it up a little bit. So that, well, let's do it like that. What I really need to do is make this uh, column, this row larger. So I'm going to go here. Notice how the icon has changed. And I'm going to drag it down. And that gives me room for my chart. Actually, that's a little too much. That should be fine. A little more. Okay. So there's my chart. Now, uh, notice that this is with a particular set of parameters over here. If I change my starting value, say, to minus 6, Notice how the approximation is no longer so good. If I this is going from minus 6 to 2. If I change this increment also to 0.2, you can see that the Taylor approximation is very good in this interval from about minus 3 up to 3. But after that, it really goes to pot. This is typical of Taylor series. They work well, very close to the point of expansion, and then towards the edges they rapidly become much worse. Right. I'm going to go back and change this to minus 3 again, and this one to point 0.1. Let's see what the errors actually are. I'm going to go over here and do a plot of my errors. Okay. So I will want to plot the... Let me go ahead and uh, grab these two columns here at the error and the theoretical error. Uh, all right, let me just start with the error, okay? And I'll go to here. And I do want an XY chart again. And I do want straight lines, and I'll go to next. That's my data range, so let's go here. I have my Y values here. I need to select my X values. 
and go here to select X values and go here to go to the sheet. My X values are actually the same as before. Those are the values here. I should go down to, I know by now I go down to 71. There we go. All right, so that's my error series. And you can see how my error, even though my error is small, it increases rapidly the farther away I get from my point zero. This is a bad characteristic. Uh, we will see later ways to have error so the error is more uniform across the entire interval. All right, I want to add also my theoretical maximum error, so I'm going to right-click here, Data Ranges, add another series, Range for Name, select Data Range, use my scroll to, uh, sorry, okay, I'm going to uh, uh, go in here. All right, that's incorrect. That's not where the name is. Let's try again. I'm going to scroll up to where the name is. This is the theoretical error. Uh, for my X values, they're the same as before. Select the data range. My X values are in here. I should go down to 71 again. And then my Y values are here. A theoretical error. Okay. All right, so let's see how that works. So notice my theoretical error is larger than my actual error. I actually have a mistake here. Here it's becoming negative. So I should fix my formula for theoretical error. Before I fix it, let me move the chart up top. I'm going to click in my chart. Click back on, I'm sorry, click in my spreadsheet. Click back on the chart. Right click, cut, go up here, and then I'll click here and then I'll paste. So here's my error chart. I'm going to click in the spreadsheet, click on the chart, scroll over a little bit, find this green square, compress a little bit, move the whole thing over, and that's my error. So one last thing I need to do is fix the error. This should be, abs this should be an absolute value, so I'm going to go ahead and put ABS here and close it there and then I'm going to go ahead and change that everywhere in my formula. Control D for fill down and let's see what happened now. Right. So my theoretical error is somewhat worse than my actual but at least it's bigger which is a good thing because at least I want to know how large the error can possibly be. If I overestimate the error, that's okay. If I underestimate, that's bad. All right, so let's see again what happens if I change this to minus 6. And I change my increment to 0.2. And you can see the function value is bad here. The error uh, looks similar. Let's try instead, we'll change this to uh, minus 1. And we'll change this instead of 0.2. I think we can do like 0.05. Let's see what happens. 0.05. It'll take me from minus 1 to about 2. And let's see what the error looks like. Okay, we can see that little error here, quite a bit of error out there. Okay, that's it.